what it do, what it do. Once again, excuse my bed because it does not have the sheet on it. My husband is going to the laundry. But this is my first review of Married at First Sight. Season 12, this is starting for me, episode 6. Why episode 6? Because I don't watch anything prior to prior to episode like 5 because this is when the honeymoon usually start beginning and stuff start happening and prior to that everything is pretty boring so I don't really watch it. So what I did was I went back and I watched uh, episode 5 to get the idea, get the feel of all the all the couples and then I watched episode 6 today. Honey, so I haven't I haven't seen any reviews. I don't watch any like stuff that's on the internet about the couples, about the show, until I actually start watching it. I try to stay as far away from it as possible. So this is my honest reviews from today, watching it today. Again, excuse the mattress. <laughs> but it's a clean mattress, but excuse it. Okay. Oh, so my goal from couple to couple. Go from couple to couple. Have my um, iPads right here to help me remember the faces of each person. What did I just do? Did I just erase it? Hold on. Technical difficulties. Okay, and we are back. Okay, so first, let's start on a lighter note. Shall we? Before we move on to the heavy stuff. So last week, I and this week, Clara and Ryan. Clara and Ryan is this couple right here. This couple, Clara and Ryan, right? Um, so I don't really have nothing really bad to say about these two in particular. Um, I think they're a great match for each other. I think they're a beautiful couple. Um, I don't know his nationality. I never have looked that far into it, but... Um, I just think they're a great match. And from what I've seen from his, uh, like, interviews from the after show or whatever that thing is, um, he said they had a lot in common and, you know, they liked the same kind of music and things. So I think that they, they did a great job matching these two. The only thing that was concerning was this week was um, uh, he was telling her she talked too much and she was like, I have to get used to that. No, 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 no. That's concerning. That's concerning. I don't know who you've been dating, sir, prior, prior, but this is 2021. We Women have our own voices. We can speak. We have our own mind. This is not just because, you know, men start tripping when, they, when you put this ring on, they think they own you. No, you don't own me. I'm still a human person, a human being with a mind of her own and a mouth to speak. Let this woman speak. And I, I beg this woman, do not. Do not let this man tell you what to say, when to say it, how to say it, okay? Don't do that. Don't lose yourself in this marriage. But beyond that, I think they're actually a really good couple. He just lose a little cool point for that right there and him telling her that. Um, but outside of that, I think they are a-okay with me. So I think this is one couple that is going to last to the end and then future beyond this is my first impression of them so i don't think they're going to get divorced i think we're going to last the entire episode and beyond and they might even produce children in the future so i have a good feeling about this couple <coughs> moving on <coughs> uh next couple let's go with bop, bop, bop. Haley and jacob if you're not familiar with Haley and jacob that is this couple right here can you see no, it's a little glary because I have sun coming in my TV, I mean, my window, but that is Haley and Jacob. Now, <laughs> this is a questionable couple. I'm not even sure why these was two was matched in the first place. I'm not sure because, first of all, I think she's what? Well, she was 24, 25, strike one. I don't think anybody should get married in their 20s. This is just my opinion. My opinion as a married woman, I th don't think anybody should get married in their 20s. Why? So many reasons. Because you're still young-minded. You're still finding yourself. The closer you get to the end of 20s, the closer to 30, you start maturing in a way because you start feeling that 
um, I'm I'm growing up. You, you start feeling the change. You start feeling the maturity coming on. 25 and above, no, you're not ready. You still, you just came out of your teens. You still like to hang out with friends. You still like to party. You barely have any um, financial responsibilities, depending on who your parents are. Your parents could still be supporting you at this age. Um, and I feel that about Haley. I feel that she's still young-minded. Um, they, the parents told her, he said, is there anything I need to be concerned about? He said, yeah, her age, because she still is like, young. So, yeah, I, he should have been alarmed about that in the first place, marrying somebody who is this young. I'm not even sure how old he is, but if he is mid-30s, early 40s, that was a bad mistake on his part. He should have he was concerned about that, period, point blank. He should have been concerned about that. Um, because in this episode here, in today's episode, in episode six, her age took you know, it was out on the forefront. Even though I love her because she is very blunt. I love her because she's blunt. I love her because she has a, a personality. I love her because she is not afraid to speak her mind. That part I do love about her. You know, she challenged. She would challenge somebody, you know. So you have to have, you know, be a strong kind of man to deal with her because she will challenge you, you know. So I do like that about her. But at the same time, I don't think she was ready for marriage because when they were at the, the table, all she want to do is do 24, 23 year old stuff. She wants to hang out with her friends and she's crying about that. Like, uh, you, you I want to be with my friends. He's like, I'm not trying to stop you, but you are married now. She's not grasping that. You, you took a commitment, something that you wasn't ready for in the first place. You shouldn't have took this commitment until early thirties or late twenties, early thirties. Because your, your your mind is changing. You realize that you're grown now. You have responsibilities in your 30s. You're ready for that kind of commitment with somebody. I'm 36 and I just made that co commitment. I was in a, in a space that I can do that. You know, I was ready to share. I wasn't willing to be, I, I knew what it's like to not be selfish anymore. Early 20s, you're still selfish. You still want to do things that you want to do. You want to go where you want to go. You don't want to be told nothing. And she said that. She said that's going to be a problem. We heard him trying to change her and tell her what to do. She's been um, doing what she wanted to do for a long time. When you're married, you can't think about it like that. You have to literally share yourself with somebody else 24 hours a day. And if you're not ready to do that, that is a huge commitment. Don't do it. So he, being married prior, he should have known better. You know, he should have known better than to, to take this on. But, you know, to each his own. So, yeah, she likes to um, party. And when she, she would, I love it, though, that she brings out a side of her husband that is a little, I don't even know, I don't know the right word for it. So, those two is like all in one in the first place. But, you know, what? I'm going to get to that in a moment. But I'm just talking about them in a couple, as a couple. Uh, but, yes, those two, they're not going to last because he needs something. He needs a more mature woman. You know, he needs a more older woman who has her stuff together, who, uh, who wants the same thing as he wants. And unfortunately that's not her. She's not ready for that kind of relationship. All right. So this couple isn't going to last. They might last throughout the season because they're, they're going to willing to put forth the best effort for the season but at the end, I don't see them lasting. I'm like, because they're too different. She's too young. She's too immature. I don't see them lasting. And if they last, it's going to be just for a couple of, probably maybe a year, if that. But I don't see them lasting at all. Moving on. Next couple. Another great couple. Another great couple. Brianna and Vincent. Brianna and Vincent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brianna and Vincent. Um, yes, so I think this is a great couple. Uh, from the moment they said I do, I think they're a great couple. They're a beautiful couple. Um, I don't know his nationality. Once again, I think he may be black and Mexican or something, but frankly, his nationality doesn't matter at this point because he is just he's just a good guy. Like she has a good husband. She she has a good man in general. And I like that about him. You know, he I think the biggest issue because they I don't know what he do for a living. I believe it has something had to do with tech stuff, something with computers, but don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure, 
But the, I think the biggest issue, though, is because both of them have great career jobs and they're both ambitious. That may be the um, problem in their relationship. She is an architect. Wasn't she an architect? I think she was an architect. That's huge. That is huge. You know, she's financially stable. She don't need him. She don't need him at all. She just, she wants him. And whatever he do, obviously he's financially stable as well. He don't need her. But those two together can definitely be a killer power couple. So I'm hoping that is like the only thing that may be in the future. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. I am a mess. <laughs> I'm just trying to get this video out. But um, I'm hoping this is that's like the only thing that, that may cause rift because they're both two ambitious people. But in this episode, episode six, uh, they she, he was kind of pushing the MO of her being bossy. I know at the wedding, I saw something that the parents at the vow thing that they were telling him that she's bossy. And he was trying to push that MO today um, in this episode because she wanted him to eat a certain way or put clean his face a certain way and stuff like that. So he tried to make it like she was really bossy. So I had to give him cool points, though, because he said after them cameras went off, he said, I needed, I needed to have a chat with my wife and let her know, uh-uh, this is a certain if you put, that ain't cute. You want me to stay around. You're going to have to chill. You're going to have to put pause for the cause because I ain't with that. I like that in him. I like that in him. He wasn't no pushover. He said, I'm not going to embarrass you on camera. But once these cameras go off, I'm going to let you know what it is. And that I'm not falling for. I'm not going for that. I dig that in him. I dig that. And then the next day, it went indoor skydiving. I will say I went there. I've been going there twice. If you have not came to Vegas and done that. Please, please, please go and do that because it's really, really fun. It's time for me to step my game up and actually go skydiving. But I, I had an opportunity to do that. I think it was last year, but I was so afraid. I couldn't push this, the, the, the pay button. I was, just too, I was just too afraid to do it. So, <laughs> But one of these years, I'm actually going to, I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to go skydiving. So that's on my bucket list. But indoor skydiving, if you like those kind of stuff, come on down to Vegas. Go ahead. Go down to it. I think it's on Convention Center Drive. It's very fun. You guys like it. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I need to say on them? No. All right. So my next couple, let's get to them. You know what? I had a whole couple mixed up wrong. I had... Virginia and Eric mixed up with Haley and Jacob. Virginia and Eric is the is the young couple with the young wife. So sorry, I had the names wrong. Haley and Jacob. That is the couple that she had sex with him and didn't like him no more. Ha! <laughs> okay, so this, okay, let me let's do this with it again. So Virginia and ha Jacob and Haley. I'll really show you the picture, but. Well, if I haven't, that's Virginia Haley. Okay, so this couple here, yes, that couple here. So I I recall seeing something like at the wedding, right? Um, she wasn't too happy with who she's married, right? Was so she married? Who she got married to? And then they went to the honeymoon. They left for Vegas or whatever. I think the first night or something. They were getting along, like it looked romantic, like the relationship looked like it was taking a turn and she was relaxing or whatever. Some point of episode five, they must have had sex and it just went down here. Episode six tonight, <laughs> auntie, po, po, tink, tink. Okay, she just don't like him at all. Like, like I don't know what it is because frankly, he's not a, he's not an ugly man. He, he's different from her. I, I forget what, what, what she did. And it was a lot of differences. He was a more geeky kind of guy, I think. And she was a more outgoing kind of girl. But she wasn't like the last, the, the like the New Orleans geeky guy in the flight attendant lady. He still had, you know, personality and stuff. 
like the so I I don't get what, what was the, what's the problem with this one because he's not a bad looking man. She just was not pleased from the moment she saw in him. And then poor man said, as soon as we had sex, she just kind of retreated. So I don't even know how to take this one. Is it because you had terrible sex? Or is it because, <laughs> is it because she really felt like, you know, I, I'm doing something I just don't want to do because I don't like you. Even though your sex is great. It was great sex. But I just don't like you per, in particular. So and she thought maybe... Having sex with him would make it change, make her, she feel change, and it didn't. It just made her feel worse and was like, I just don't want to do this. I just do not want to be married to this man. And and that that's hard to deal with, right? So when they're in a situation, I would love to, like, talk to them. Like, when they're in a situation like this, when they're right in this, right in the thick of it, and they're having all kind of doubts and they're feeling confused, what makes them stay? What makes them think, oh, things is going to get better? What make them think that? Because every episode, I mean, every season, a couple does this. They live in the delusion that because we're married, I have to stick it out thick or thin. Even though I've only known you for a couple days. It is going to get better. What makes these people stay? Is it because of the the, the cameras? You, you got to give good TV. If you leave, what, you're going to get sued? I, I want to look up the dialogue or the, or the rules and the regulations. Like, I want to know. Because it got to be a reason why these couples still stick it out, even though they know this ain't working out. So some couples, you know, make it to like mid season and then they're like, then they like, you know, they try to pull the plug or whatever. They, these couples is falling apart at the honeymoon. Maybe if there was a better honeymoon, let's, 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 let's chat about that for a minute. Maybe this is because the pandemic, but I tell you, there's so much more to do in Vegas. I've seen, been watching this show for 12 seasons. And for 12 seasons, their honeymoons has been amazing. You can't fucking tell me that you come into Vegas and you get these lame ass, this lame ass honeymoon. The honeymoon was cut short. I think they usually had their honeymoon is like a week, right? This honeymoon was like a couple days. They stayed at the MGM Grand, I think, or the Mandalay Bay, one of them. Stayed at the hotel, drunk, got drunk. Went one day to the, to the, four with a place and then skydiving the next day and then they was on a plane going back home if that was the bunk is what i mean they didn't go to no romantic dinners they didn't do nothing no fun it is so much more to do out here in vegas than this hell my youtube my instagram tells you that if you needed my help book or some stuff married at first sight you should have called me i'll help you because they made vegas look crappy and i didn't appreciate that i didn't appreciate that at all Okay, but back to this couple, Haley and Jacob. Is that what the name was? That what the name? Let me get make sure I'm saying their names right. Make sure I'm not saying their names right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Haley and Jacob. Where is it? Where is it? Yes, Haley and Jacob. Okay, so um, so he said they somebody came to her hotel room to have a sleepover something or another and then she bolted because he didn't want her he didn't she didn't want him to go now i don't think this relationship is gonna well obviously this relationship ain't gonna last i don't know how long it's gonna last like is it gonna be over by the time they get back to new orleans because i think he is probably the dumb hopeless romantic is gonna try to hold on to her even though he know like right now he should let her go because she don't want him and she's showing she don't want him but he's going to be the dumb, hopeless romantic that's going to try to stay and stick it out in this relationship. When somebody show you who they are, believe them. It's just only going to get worse when you get back to her hometown in Atlanta. <laughs> With people she know. And men she's actually find attractive. She don't find you attractive, honey. She find you repulsive. When she retreat after she having sex with you, she said in her mind, this was the biggest mistake of my life. Why the hell did I just do this? I fucked up. And she just retreated. She don't want you. 
She ran out of the hotel room because she didn't want to be with you anymore. She don't like you. So either she's going to leave or she's going to stay and do stuff that's going to make him push him away and make him leave. Or they just going to leave, stay miserable the entire season. She's going to start disappearing like all the rest of them. She's going to start disappearing when she get back to her hometown. And then he's going to be living in the ho in a room in the, in the home by himself and she's going to be gone all the time. Or he's going to say, I don't deserve this shit. He's going to move the hell out. And he's going to be like, I'll see you at the reunion because I'm done with this shit. Like, there's so many ways that this is going to go, but I don't see them lasting too long because I don't think he's that person who's going to, well, he may be that person who's just going to allow her to do whatever and he's going to keep being stupid and fighting for him. But I hope not. I hope he smartens up, realize she don't want you, and let this be that. Like, hey, you can't make somebody want you when they don't. Don't fuck up your self-esteem for anybody. This, this, this show kills me. These people let these people kill their self-esteem. You have plenty of self-esteem before you got in the show. And then you get in the show and you let somebody fuck up your self-esteem. Mm -mm. I can't do it. I can't do it. Mm -mm. Okay, before I'm moving on, I want to... Oh, you know what? I'm going I'm to hit it in a minute. So, the last but not least, let's get to it. Oh, boy. This couple, this couple, this couple. Yeah. Paige and Chris. Paige and Chris. Mm, 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 mm. I, I have no words. <laughs> well, I have a lot of words, but figure of speech, I have no words. Because I, I didn't think... The, I didn't think somebody could get any worse. Who who was the bad person last season? Like every season, like you you get a couple that frustrates me from the beginning. Like every time I do re these reviews, it just begins to frustrate me from the beginning. When you have a couple like this, and you say, "What the." Why was they even, why is he on the show? Why was they matched? Why, why, why? So this is beginning to look like Lifetime do this on purpose for ratings. They have to. Because there is no way you're going to tell me that you put a man who was freshly out of an engagement to another woman, was it five weeks or five months? I mean, I'm, I'm going to give and take five months. I'm saying he just had an engagement. Five months. See, I didn't look at the like the match special. I should have. I should go back and, and see what he said to these people and see what they asked him. Because if they would have asked him, were you ever engaged? And he said, yeah, I just got an engagement five months ago. And they still thought that was a good idea to match him with somebody else. This is their fault. The matchmaker's fault. Because this is unbelievable. And then you marry her. You tell the family that, yes, I married. No, I was engaged. We got, we broke engagement five months ago or something. So whatever he told the family. And then you come on a show, you accept the show and get married to somebody. Tell the fit, tell her after y'all spent the night together, had sex twice, I may add. I think it was twice. Tell her I'm not physically attracted to you. Then tell the family the same thing. I like her body, but her face not so much. Then go on your honeymoon, retreat in yourself. Then bust some more information and say, the same person I was engaged to is six weeks pregnant and then turn around 
in this episode, she asks him, we're going to go back to Atlanta. Where do we stand or where do you stand with the relationship? He said, we have been in communication. I want to raise my baby with her because I still love her. I said, Lord, have mercy. Like, how do you... <laughs> How do you wrap your head around the stuff that happens on this show? Like, it get worse every season. Like, there's somebody who's worse than the last person every season. Where do they find these people? Like, this this step of this season is just unbelievable already. This is like episode, this is literally episode six. Unbelievable. I'm like. And she, I started off feeling bad for her. I did. Because no woman should have to deal with that. You shouldn't have to go through that. But then as the episode has gone by, the ones that I have seen, I'm losing respect for her. Because I'm like, first of all, you're not speaking up when you should. You're not expressing how you fucking feel about the situation. You're letting him do whatever he wants to do and say whatever he wants today in a in the sake of because it's your fucking husband and you don't know him and what you don't want to hurt his fucking feelings but he constantly hurting yours like don't suppress your feelings for this man who you don't even know and he didn't drop bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb on you and you still ain't said nothing so at the ATV they go ATV ride it and then one of the castmates confront him that's the girl that I said that I love the young girl who I said I love um her because she got, you know, she got a lot of spunk. I do. I love her. <laughs> She's not afraid to challenge you. She's not afraid to challenge you at whatsoever. What's her name? Uh, Vir Virginia. Yes. Her name is Virginia. So she wasn't afraid to get all up in his grill. And I loved it because his own wife wouldn't do it. His own wife, Paige, wouldn't get up in his ass I and mean, everything. How embarrassing it got to be for your ass to have to tell five other, four other couples that you don't know who's doing the same thing that you're doing. Yeah, my husband, by the way, was married five months or engaged five months ago. And he, you know, came on the show and he got her pregnant and he still loves her. And when we go back, he might want to work things out with her. How can you say a five, four other episode and he's talking about, I'm asking for my privacy. Your wife is disrespectful. What? You have privacy on this show? On Married at First Sight, the one that you signed up for, right? And you, are you asking for a privacy? Right? What? This is between me and my wife. You forgot? This is going to air, right? The world is going to see this, right? And we're going to see who you are. Hopefully when you see yourself on TV, the arrogance that it is you, Turn down a bit because you are just, you're too much. Like you're, you're too much. Like whatever that, I guess his little chicken shack subway chain makes him a lot of, you know, a lot of money. Good for him. That's great. That's fabulous. And then you, you, you should have an ego about that, your successes. But when your ego is on TV and it's just, I hope you see how trash you look because you are trash, sir. You are so trash. It's disgusting. And if that bitch, your, your fiance who's pregnant, wants you, please go back to her. Paige, and I hope you fucking have broke up with his ass that night because after the episode aired. Wait. So her husband, uh, Virginia's husband, stood up for her. <laughs> they, those two just did not get along. Mr. Eric, so they get into the van, and after the confrontation at the hotel, well, from leaving from the ATV, Mr. Chris, ain't this his name? Yes, Mr. Chris wants to act like a punk bitch, get into the van, and start mouthing off like a little bitch, because he got all this aggression going on. He's yelling and shit in the van. Ain't nobody paying him no mind. They're like, shut up. He's just going off like a little pussy. I said, oh, you couldn't even get no more pussy for me. Like, th this was so unattractive of you. You couldn't even get no, you couldn't even get none. That was disgusting. And then he gets back to the hotel. You can tell he's, he's he know he's charming, right? So they get back and 
He wants to apologize the next day, their last um, thing together. They want to apologize. It. He wants to say all the right things. That's how he got Paige to stay this long because he'll say something fucked up. Like, oh, by the way, I got my wife, my ex fiance pregnant, but you're my, you're the main person that's in my life right now. So it doesn't matter. So he knows how to say the right things to get you to stay and get you on his side. So here he is. He saw saying all the right things at the table. Everybody's eating it up. Eating it up. Eric and Virginia come downstairs and fuck it all back up. Just fuck it all back up. Turn turn the whole dinner all upside down. I loved it. I love every single second of it. Because he's a clown. And they was falling for it just for the sake of, oh, we, we, want, we don't want no drama. We want peace. No, he wasn't even genuine about what the fuck he was talking about. He's a clown. So I like that Eric and Virginia came in there and then told some shit up and then left. I loved it. So at the end, here we go. She asked him, she asked him, you know, have what what where does it land? Where does y'all stand or whatever? And he says, Yeah, we still in love with each other. So we wanna something or another, we wanna rethink how to raise the family together or something, something like that. Something in that range if he wanna get back with his fiance. And she said, well, I am done. And she left the hotel room. I hope she really means that. I hope next week, because I ain't seen no previews or nothing for next week. So I hope next week she actually means that. And she tossed that fucking ring dead at his face and said, go ahead and go back with her because I ain't got time for this. I ain't finna chase after no man who wants his ex-fiance. Go back to her and just cut it, cut your losses, boo. Cut your losses. Let them hook you up with somebody else. Because I'm telling you, I have a feeling if she was more attractive in his eyes, in his eyes, she was some exotic bitch, if she was some, you know, would he would have chucked the deuces to her like that? Would he would have did her like this in these consecutive days like this? Would he would have treated her like this? Because he wasn't attracted to her. He was just like, I don't, I don't want to do it. Chuck the deuces. Which that part I'm not mad at. If you just don't want to do it, chuck the deuces. But you don't got to come up with all this bullshit to do chuck the deuces. Just chuck the fucking deuces. You already hit it with the low blow. Look, I don't find you attractive. I tried thought sleeping with you was going to do something, but it didn't. But you, everything else, just chuck the fucking deuces. But hopefully she, Paige, takes this and says, you know, it ain't worth it and bounce. Chuck your deuces. Cut your losses. And that is I'm going to cut my losses. So see you people next week. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for another episode of uh, Regina's World and my review to Marry That First Night episode six. And you will get a weekly episode, weekly review from me from now until this season is over. Which means no more story times for the remainder of Marry That First Sight. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, ah, I'm out. All right, thanks again. Follow me on my social media, Keisha Maurice Robinson and Sleepless LV. Sleepless and LVNV on Instagram. And I promise next time, if I do my review on my bed, I will have my sheets and blankets and pillows on it. They're just at the laundromat. All right, peace out, y'all.